Alana Riva. Alana, please uh, unmute yourself and ask your question. Um, I, I just think, uh, yeah, I, I try to stay more even keeled emotionally um, as far as on the uh, emotional side, I guess, uh, when I'm not yelling and cheering. Um, I don't know. It, it's just been to see where we came, and, and, and I preface this by saying the job's not done, and, and we all understand that. But I think that, uh, you know, to start with the pandemic and a lot of things going on and guys not with their families and all the uh, social injustice. It's been a lot of sacrifices from guys, and guys are uncomfortable, um, but still to kind of buy into the Dodge and what we're doing to win baseball games and to make such a difficult year in some instances uh, positive in a championship year for the Los Angeles Dodge and the city of Los Angeles. Um, so had our backs against the walls and had to win three games in a row against a very good ball club. And so there's a lot of things that had to happen, and we did it. So I don't know. It was just a kind of it all came together, and I was just really happy for our guys. Ninth inning at the 4-3 game, game seven, uh, Corey Seager said that that was Julio's game to close out. So why did you continue to stay with Julio, who's obviously pitching very well, uh, in, that, in that instance instead of Kenley? Well, I, I mean, you know, Kenley's been great. He's been absolutely great, and we wouldn't be on our way to the World Series without him. Um, but I just think in that moment, Julio, with the day's rest, how he was throwing the baseball, uh, in preceding days, what we asked of Kenley as far as usage-wise and just to kind of ride the hot hand right there. And, you know, Kenley was one of the first people that came and gave me a huge hug and congratulated all of us and talked about winning four more. So that just speaks to him as a leader and as a teammate. I, I think I'll start with the first one. I, I think the double play by Justin off the, you know, trying and coming in there to limit damage and getting that double play right there started it to kind of keep the game where it's at. Um, Kike to tie us up, um, Mookie's play to rob a homer, um, and then obviously Cody. Um, but the at-bats, the, the, the Kike at-bat, you know, there's just so many good things. Uh, you know, there was an at-bat I forgot, um, you know, even with um, – their starter, their starter, where there was a couple quick outs, and then Justin took a great at bat to kind of get that pitch to Anderson to get the pitch count back up. That was a big at bat that just doesn't really speak, but that was a big at bat too. Also, and the Wilson, the yeah. Thanks, Alana. Thanks, Alana. Thanks, Alana. The uh, situation where Turner made that play, what did you have the infield at uh, normal depth? Because they weren't playing in. No, they weren't playing in. They weren't playing, but but with the left-hander, we wanted him in. Typically, the opposite corner infielder would play in. And, uh, you know, two strikes, and, and Markek has blocked the ball, and Justin just really heads up play and understand that, you know, we got to get that lead runner, and he did that. And the heads up play, the, the acumen that Justin has with baseball, just to kind of understand that there's a the bat, the trail runner to get Riley at third base too, it's just huge. Um, that wasn't part of the scenarios. Um, <laughs> I, I just felt that at that point in time, I just didn't think, you know, the ball was coming out right with Tony as far as execution, and um, I didn't want the game to get away from us. And I just felt the best person at that time was Blake. And, you know, if we were to get through that situation, we'll, we'll figure out a way to piece the game together. Uh, what did you see from this group and you feel like you've been back to, to uh, 
I, I mean, Cody is as talented as any player in baseball, but I think that this postseason has shown him, um, and he's learning really the value of controlling the strike zone and taking what they give you, trying to win pitches and. You know, if there's a walk in there, take the walk. And if they make a mistake, you can still slug. And, you know, from Corey to, to Cody, they're, they've really grown, you know, talented players. But what they're doing this postseason is another level. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, he was. And I think that what our hitting guys talk a lot about is understanding the game situation, controlling the barrel, and, and that was a shift. And so he got a breaking ball, and he stayed inside it, stayed above it, and uh, drove in a couple runs instead of trying to hit a three-run homer. So Will's done that numerous times for us. And um, just for a young player to really understand that part of the game is, is pretty impressive. Yeah, absolutely. And, and sometimes it just comes with experience and, and, and I guess, to be quite honest, some failures. Um, but if you look at how much Corey's walked, how much Cody's walked, it's more than they ever have in the postseason. And that's just kind of growth experience. And, you know, the, the coach is talking about it, the hitting guys, and then also the players really understanding and buying into it. But, um, yeah, these guys have done fantastic jobs. No, I don't think. I mean, that's certainly a difference. That, but that goes to the players have earned that. You know, when when lefties are hitting lefties and righties are hitting righties, um, they've earned that. And I don't think in '18 there was a couple guys that didn't show that. Um, I think that. Um, I think the, we would have beat the Red Sox if we had had Mookie Betts. Um, but you know, we've got experience, and um, we're just we're playing good baseball. I just think the first lefty was just velocity and it was a loopy curveball and Jock, you know, I, I felt fine as, as far as that situation, Kike spot might come up again, Jock's spot with a lefty or the righty might come up again. So I just thought it was a little too early to fire Kike and then you get the next guy w who can spin the baseball, which, you know, sometimes gives left hand hitter a little bit more trouble. I just like Kike in that spot. You got Tim. Thank you. Um, well, to speaking to Seeger, he's been like that, but I think even in the postseason, he's been better at taking walks when he needs to, um, being really aggressive in the strike zone, and the slug speaks to that. Um, as, as far as Cody, you know, the surface line average might sp not speak to how good he's been, but uh, spoiling pitches, the amount of pitches he's seen, taking walks, um, uh, has been considerably better than he was this season, and that's just credit goes to him. Do you think that all of that led to the night that he had tonight? 
Um, Julio is very talented. He's very smart, and he's very tough. And, um, you know, we've kind of handled him over the last four years with kid gloves, um, kind of trying to build him up and he put him in different roles, um, some that he hasn't really liked and, and uh, appreciated, which I totally get. Um, but it, when it comes down to it, he just wants to pitch, wants to compete, and wants to help the Dodgers win. Um, and I think as far as tonight, all that stuff, it was his moment. And, and for me, I trust him. Uh, he was throwing the baseball well, and uh, I wanted him to finish that game. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much.